Let me give an example for the graph based protocol. I have taken the following graph or a tree and I have taken three transactions and various locks. This L represents that it is a lock which is an exclusive lock. Only exclusive lock is allowed and this is an unlock, unlock. So I hope it is visible to everyone. This is an exclusive lock on D, this is on D, this is H and this UD means it is an unlock D. So now first we will check whether this transaction, each transaction is following the graph based order or not. This is the graph they have given and these are the transactions and set of operations they have given. First it is our duty whether each transaction is following the graph order or not. Now what is the first rule we said? All the locks are exclusive locks only. There is no shared locks here. Okay. Now first exclusive lock only. We said the second point is that we can lock the for each transaction can next up take the first lock on any data item. So this transaction T1 has taken the data lock on the data item B. Okay. Permitted. Now lock on E. It is now asking lock on E. Now when this lock on E is allowed, if its parent, its parent is B. B is already locked, so I can allow to take an exclusive lock on E. Wait, sorry, it is sorry, this is D because already we have locked B. Why should we lock? So lock exclusive lock on D. Yeah, it is also allowed because the parent is locked. Now unlock B. As I said, we can unlock any data item at any moment. So I have exclude, I have released the lock on B. But subsequently I cannot again lock on B. That is the point you should remember. Unlock B is finished. Unlock E. So this is also allowed. We can unlock. Now exclusive lock on G. Where is the data item G? Is the data item G is dependent on the data item B. Now B is the parent of the G. Okay, so it is already locked, so I can lock it because still I did not release the lock on the D. Okay, lock on G, unlock D, yeah, you are permitted, unlock G, yeah, it is also permitted. So this transaction is following the order. Now we will see whether this transaction, transaction 2 is following the same order or not, means based on the graph or not. Exclusive lock on D. Yeah, permitted because the first lock can be on any data item. Exclusive lock on H. Yeah, permitted because its parent D is locked. Unlock D, unlock H. Yeah, permitted. Okay, so transaction 2 is also following the order. Now we'll see the transaction 3. Exclusive lock on B. Yeah, okay. Exclusive lock on E. Okay. Unlock E. Yeah. Unlocking, unlocking B. Yeah, it is also okay. So all the transaction T1, T2, T3 is following the graph-based order given on given for the particular graph. Okay. Now we will see any. This is a non-serial schedule. Am I right or wrong? Transaction T1, transaction T2, transaction T3 are executing in a non-serial lines. So you need that. Trans any schedule, the given schedule S1, any schedule, if it is a non serial schedule, first we need to find the equivalent serial schedule because all the serial schedules does not create any problem, they are safe to execute. Whereas non serial schedules are not safe to execute, sometimes they may create the problem like we have deadlock problem, all these things. So it is our duty to find whether the non-serial schedule, whether equivalent serial schedule is there or not. Okay. So now we will see whether equivalent serial schedule is there or not. How I can find equivalent serial schedule or not. We have discussed conflict equivalent, view equivalent, all these things. But now we will not discuss. We will solve it in a simple way according to the graph based protocol only. This is whatever the thing I am discussing, it is applied only for the graph based protocol. Now the first statement is there, please remember one thing. If you have taken an exclusive lock on B, means data item B, you have taken exclusive lock is B, means that you want to perform the right operation. Am I right or wrong? Even if you have taken exclusive lock on D, means a data item D, meaning is that you are performing the right operation. So what I can say, this exclusive lock was taken for the right operation. So you can, for simplicity, you can replace all the locks, all the locks means all the exclusive locks with the respect of right operation. So this one will act as a right of B, so that you can 
draw the polygraph easily. And this is the right of D. This is the right of H. You can replace them like that or if you are experienced means you have practiced so many questions directly also you can solve. So if you want to find the serializability all the exclusive locks can be replaced with the right operation because we are taking the exclusive lock for the right operation. Okay. So right of E like that you can do. Okay. Then I can easily find out what is the serializability whether any serial schedule is there or not. If it is not there I can say that this is not a safe schedule to execute. Okay. Now let me see. So to find the serializability, we have to draw the polygraph. I hope everyone has remembered the conflict serializability during that time we have discussed about the polygraph construction. Polygraph construction will have a nodes which are equivalent to number of transactions. Here in this schedule we have three transactions. So we will have the three nodes, transaction P1, transaction P2 and transaction P3. Now the edges. How we will find the edges between transaction P1 and transaction P2 and transaction P3 is whether if any conflict is there then we will draw the edge. Now if you take that we have an exclusive lock on B. Okay. Right B. Now I need to find anywhere right B is there. Here there is no right B, there is no right B because these are locks and exclusive lock B, exclusive lock H, all these things. Now this is an exclusive lock on B. So this is nothing but it is a right B and right B. Now what is the conflict operation? A right 1B because it is a transaction 1, right operation, right 3B. Means the order should be, first this right should be executed, then this right should be executed. So the order is the T1, then T3. I hope everyone has understood, know how to draw the polygraph. Okay, so this is the first one. Now we'll see. So this is finished. Now we'll come to the exclusive lock on D. Exclusive lock on D and exclusive lock on D. First we need to check with this one. Okay, exclusive lock on D, exclusive lock on D. Meaning is that a right 2 on D to right 1 on D. Meaning is that there should be an edge between transaction T to transaction 1. Are you able to understand it or not? How I got an edge between transaction T2 to transaction T1 is that you have an exclusive lock on D which is equivalent to right of D. And again you have an exclusive lock on D which is a right of D. So if you are confused you can write like that right on D, right on D. It is a right, right conflict and the order should be right 2 to right 1. Then only in any equivalent serial schedule the order should be like this. Okay. So that's why transaction T2 to transaction T1. Now, this one is finished. Exclusive lock on H. Whether any lock on H is there, there is no other right operation. Okay, so we can leave it. Unlock D, we no need to worry. Exclusive lock on E, and there is an exclusive lock on E. This says that right 1, this is a right of E, this is a right of E. Now, what is the conflict operation? right 1 of E to right 3 of E meaning is that there should be an edge between transaction T1 to transaction T3 already an edge is there so we no need to read write again ok now this is also finished lock D there is no subsequence unlock exclusive lock on G there is no exclusive lock on D so all everything will finish because once we have done Unlocks, unlocks, we no need to worry. Exclusive lock on B, but there is no other exclusive locks on B. So this is no need to worry. Exclusive lock on E. Subsequently, there is no locks on E in either transaction P2 and transaction P3. Then unlock H, not a problem. Exclusive lock on G. There is no other locks and means there is no exclusive lock on that item G in transaction T2 and transaction P3. We no need to worry. So this is finished. So we have constructed the polygraph. Now whether what is the first thing we need to check whether any loops are there. If it is loops are there then we will say that the given schedule for the given schedule there is no equivalent serial schedule. But in this polygraph there is no cycles. Okay so I can say that there is it is a 
some serial schedule is available for the given non serial schedule so now what we have to find if we find like this t2 because from t2 if i start it is not like that always we should start with t1 okay t2 then i will go to t1 then i will come to t3 so this is an equal and serial schedule for the given non serial schedule so we can using the graph based protocol we can find the serializability also okay i hope you have understood this example anyway for your comfort i will give another example in the next video thank you